In this tutorial, we're going to talk about using LogoPond, which is an excellent resource. As you can see, uh, the LogoPond logo is followed by their tagline, Identity Inspiration. So LogoPond is basically a forum, a community of graphic designers who showcase uh, prototype designs, completed designs, and projects. You know, they solicit feedback, they sell logos, it's just a really nice community. You can keyword search through this community. So for example, if I click on search and I type in ink and click uh, search, it's going to search all of the logos that might be related to ink. Uh, so you, know, you can search by theme, you can search by topic or tag, and you'll be surprised with how many designs come up. So if you're ever charged with creating a logo for a client, you know, corporate identity or design in general, this is a, a primary go-to for, for me to get really inspiration, uh, to get a sense of color, combinations, styles, um, and it's just a really, really great uh, resource. So let's talk about using some of these ideas uh, in, in conjunction with, uh, with our design workflow. So the very first thing that I uh, recommend and I suggest is you can click on any of these thumbnails and you'll get a larger preview here. And of course we can right mouse click on that and I can say copy image. We can go right back into Corel and I can paste that image in. Now we're not advocating stealing anybody's designs, we're just advocating sort of ripping off and duplicating, you know, uh, finding best practices, finding good ideas and, and taking from that. So the very first thing I like to do is, is especially to, to get color ways and color themes from existing logos. And uh, one of my favorite tools in Corel is the eyedropper tool, and that makes this process really easy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw uh, some squares here, and I'm going to duplicate that square, and we'll duplicate that one more time. And this is a great way to create just a color palette for your, uh, for your client. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and grab the uh, color eyedropper tool. Notice where my mouse is hovering. And when I hover that over a, an object, notice how it changes. It gives me the red, green, and blue, the RGB values for that particular color. So I can go and sample a color by left mouse clicking. And once I've sampled that particular color, I'm going to go into one of these shapes here. And notice how my, I go from a, an eyedropper to a fill or to a bucket. So if I click on one of those squares, notice how it just added that color that we sampled into our, um, our little square here, our little color palette. Now we can also add that to palette. So we can create our own custom document palette and save and manage that as well in our document palette. Uh, now I'm going to go back and grab the eyedropper, select color. Let's go and grab this other darker shade of blue. I'm going to go back and add that to my little uh, square, and we'll go back and sample, uh, well, this happens just to be white, so we'll go and add white to our uh, color palette uh, box here. And uh, now we have three colors uh, that we can present to a client that we can use in concepts and mock-ups, and uh, we don't have to really be concerned with color. Now you can always go back to Logo Pond, and maybe you want to find another theme, um, so we'll go to search, and, uh, and we'll just keep it in the same thing, we'll go back to ink. And we'll choose another color strategy, another color theme. Um, maybe we'll, we'll find something that has a little more color in it. So maybe this green and red would be appropriate. Uh, let's go scan down here. This actually has some really unique colors to it. So I'll go grab this one more time and say copy image. Go back to Corel and we'll paste this in as well. And uh, same process. In fact, I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to take those three colorways we created and duplicate those and drag them right below. What I'm going to do is go grab the eyedropper tool one more time. We'll go and click on a color, uh, drop it in. We'll go back to the eyedropper tool and go sample that shade of orange. Drop that in and then we'll go sample that particular shade of brown and drop that in as well. Oop, let me go click properly. In fact, I need to scan into this darker shade here. You can zoom way in to pinpoint a specific color. In fact, as I zoom way in here, you'll see that there's varying shades of that brown. So you can really go pinpoint the right color uh, that would be suitable for your project, and then go dump that into your, uh, your palette as well. So you can see how we just created, uh, uh, really, we just created uh, two unique color palettes for a project in, uh, in about a minute. So pretty straightforward and easy. Now the other thing you can do, and once again, we're not advocating uh, ripping off and stealing uh, to, to a degree of copyright infringement, uh, but in an earlier tutorial, we talked about locking an object to your workspace. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right mouse click on this particular object, and I'm going to say lock. And that's going to bind that particular bitmap to my workspace. It's not going to move. And that would give me the opportunity to zoom in here. And albeit this is a very simple uh, graphic here, I can go and choose my Bezier tool. And I might want to reconstruct this. Maybe I just like the general shape of this design. I can go and take my Bezier tool and just really, really easily and quickly uh, you know, mimic 
that uh, shape, and maybe I'll use that as inspiration, or I'll edit that further, uh, maybe change the proportions. But you see how easy it is to take that particular shape and sort of reconstruct it in, uh, in vector format. Obviously, I didn't take great care to make sure that it was uh, you know, symmetrical, but nonetheless, you get the point. Now I'll go back and right mouse click and say unlock object. I'll delete that from my workspace and we'll take this uh, vector shape that we just uh, illustrated and I can use these colors and kind of get a sense of how that's going to impact my design. So I can go and sample the color, I can drop it into my object, and we'll go back and sample say this shade and kind of get a sense of how these will work together. So this is just a great tool set to once again source colors uh, from Logo Pond find inspiration to begin with. You know, if you're assigned with a sort of abstract product, you can uh, find just shapes and concepts and ideas and maybe colors that might be suitable to work with as well.